the cycle. Out of the 613 misfolk, 74 of them are in the parish on for today. Uh, I believe it's 26 positives and 48 negatives. Mitzvah, mitzvot that are contained there, and it deals very much with our attitude and our relationship toward our fellow man and toward our brothers and sisters as toward Hashem. We might prefer to treat those two strands of righteousness separately, but Torah speaks of both in one breath as in the command to provide justice for the stranger, the orphan, and the widow, the most vulnerable and the most disenfranchised elements within Israel. The rationale for the law is not only ethical but also theological. We're to protect the disenfranchised because we were once disenfranchised ourselves in Egypt and Adonai our God redeemed us. Our treatment of the stranger, the orphan, and the widow reflects the holiness and the character of the God of Israel. We remember his redemption by practicing redemption ourselves. Hashem himself enforces this linkage between his character and our behavior. Moshe tells the Israelites that if they practice righteousness toward the needy, Adonai will bless you in all the work of your hands. Conversely, Deuteronomy 15, 7 to 11, warns Israel that if they oppress the poor man, he will cry out to Adonai against you, and Adonai will hear. Likewise, to your brother you may not charge interest, that Adonai your God may bless you in all to which you set your hand. And you shall have a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure, that your days may be lengthened in the land which Adonai your God is giving you. God steps into the midst of our secular concerns to show that among the redeemed there are no strictly secular concerns. All that we do reflects God's character and God will reward behavior that reflects Him accurately. And our Messiah taught that the two aspects of righteousness belong together. The first and great commandment, he said, is the Shema. You shall love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. The second commandment, Yeshua said, is like it, or like to it. Not something similar. There's a difference. It is like it in importance. It is like it in the interest of our witness, each of these commandments are incomplete without the other. Both are essential. A love of neighbor is not only ethical behavior, but also an expression of love for Hashem. And love of Hashem cannot be expressed in ritual alone, but requires love of neighbor. The proper ritual without an ethical dimension is flawed. Religious observance <clears throat> that does not command and proper treatment of our fellow human beings, no matter how spiritual it may appear, will lead us to self-righteousness, to elitism, and to finally irrelevant. Jewish tradition recognizes this truth in its use of the word zedakah, the feminine form of the term zedek, or righteousness. Zedakah, at least since the time of the Mishnah, refers to giving to the needy in what we call in English charity. As I learned as a child in Shabbat school, however, says Rabbi Resnick, Zedakah involves more than charity. It is a religious obligation to help restore the ideal order among humanity, to recognize in action the inherent dignity of every human being. 
Jorah could have allowed the farmer to harvest the entire crop and then practice charity by handing out a portion to the poor. But instead, it preserves the dignity of the stranger, the orphan, and the widow by granting them a share of the field. The gleanings belong to them. Further, Torah reminds the farmer that he was once vulnerable and poor as well. He must not take his current prosperity for granted, but recognize that it is in fact a gift from Hashem to be shared with the community. And this kind of teaching has vast social ramifications. We can begin to apply it though within the intimate society of our own congregations. We are a redeemed people. Our life together as a people should mirror and should reveal that redemption. As in ancient Israel, there may still be unequal distribution of resources, but there is to be no oppressor among us, no one hoarding goods when others are in need. The resources of the congregation, the scriptures, the public worship, whatever facilities it may possess, belong equally to each and to all. Those who are powerful are to use their position to lift up those who are vulnerable. In his New Covenant letter, Yaakov, James, reminds us that the redeemed community reflects this unique standard. And in James 2, verses 2 through 5, he writes, For if a man comes into your synagogue with gold rings and fine apparel, and there also comes in a poor man in filthy clothes, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say to him, you sit here in a good place and you say to the poor man, you stand there or sit here in my footstool. Have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, beloved brothers. Has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him. Hashem, the God we serve, is concerned not only with proper ritual, but he steps into the midst of our social arrangements to establish an order that reflects through us his redemption and his justice. He demands that we not hoard his great act of redemption for ourselves, but then we disperse it among the needy. Almighty God, we praise you, we thank you for the word that's before us and for the understanding, Lord, that you've lifted to the sages through the years. Thankful to be part of your wonderful, wonderful family. I pray that each brother and sister that's in this room this morning might recognize just how precious, just how valuable, just how important they really are. Each of us is one for whom you gave it all, Lord. It's pretty awesome stuff, Father. Help us, we pray, to comprehend what you're doing for us, all that you have done for us, and all that you will do for us and through us. Guide us as instruments of your hand, Holy One. We shall be sure. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.